Hello, everyone. They have me talk after a literal rock star, so I'm a bit stressed. Moreover, I, I uh, live in a very small village, like there is less than 300 inhabitants. There's more cows. Uh, but yeah, I'm here to talk about Smithy and Smithy Rice. Um, so before I sort of dive into what those things are, I'm going to talk about a little bit of uh, the problem. So I work for a very large organization, very large company. Uh, used to own the copyrights to Steamboat Willy. Um, so it's, it's a company that's divided into several organizations. And each organization is like subdivided into teams. And each team has potentially some like services or software components that need to talk to other components uh, that belong to other teams. And uh, well, not all teams use the same programming languages. So all Node all no teams have the sort of similar terminology to talk about how things should talk to one another. So um, that's, a, that's a big problem because like every single one of those interactions is a massive time sink and therefore money sink because the, the sort of um, conversations take a long time and then once you've sort of outlined what needs to be implemented, the implementation takes a long time as well. Um, so that's what we're trying to solve with what I'm going to talk about. It's really the facilitation of uh, discussions between teams, uh, negotiations between the data that flows onto the, the um, pipelines, and do that at scale. Um, so in order to sort of explore solutions to, to those problems, we need to sort of uh, acknowledge the, the challenges. Um, a good solution will have to sort of allow for the definition of like business level semantics. So we need to, to be able to sort of talk about what exactly we're doing about the business um, centric like definition of like concepts. Then there's the how. The how is more like protocol level. It's got to do with like serialization and transport. Like are you using JSON, are you using XML? What does this data type translate to when it's uh, serialized as JSON? What is the transport? Are we using HTTP? Are we using some sort of asynchronous pipeline? This kind of stuff. And obviously, like it's not enough to just be able to define those things. We also want for those definitions to be uh, easy or to, to sort of allow for automation. We want to process those definitions in automated pipelines. So uh, the organization has sort of identified the Smithy IDL as a, a good axis of solution. Don't worry too much about the code on the right. I'm going to explain it. Um, but Smithy is sort of a, an IDL, so it's an interface definition language. It comes from AWS. AWS is about I don't know, like thousands of services internally, and they have uh, 330 services publicly available. They serve SDK to talk to their services for maybe like 12 different languages. Um, so obviously, like they rely a lot on code generation because it wouldn't scale otherwise if they had people to handcraft the SDKs. Um, Smithy has the quality of being protocol agnostic meaning it's not like proto, it's not biased towards a, a given serialization or a given transport. Um, so yeah, it means that the how is decoupled from the what. And um, it is very tractable. It's easy to understand, it's easy to manipulate. If you give it to a software engineer, they will understand it like really fast. Um, so there's gonna be like three parts in this talk. I'm gonna talk about Smithy as a, as a meta model. Then I'll talk about um, the Smithy compiler, and then I'll talk about the, the Scala tooling that we are, my team is building on top of Smithy. So a meta model is basically um, a set of building blocks that allow to define data and uh, concepts, so it's sort of a model for models. And so uh, the building blocks in Smithy are, um, well, there's, there's sort of the most atomic ones, uh, which are basically simple shapes. So you have a set of um, like 12 different shapes that are simple. They're your basically primitive types and you, you can define them yourself and the Smithy uh, standard library, which is namespaced under the smithy.api thing, predefines number of, uh, of shapes for each of the, the shape types. So you have the usual string, boolean, numerics, 
you have timestamps, you have blobs, which are basically this binary blob of data, an array of bytes or a byte buffer or something like that. And you have document, which is a sort of JSON-like um, arbitrary piece of data. Then you can, uh, like in your own namespaces, you can define your own uh, simple shapes. You can sort of create business level definitions that capture some concepts that are um, specific to your domain, like name, towns, users, user IDs, whatever. Um, so yeah, they're, they're sort of very reminiscent to sort of opaque types in Scalafree or new types, I suppose. Um, additionally, you have collections. You have two types of collections in Smithy. You have lists and maps. There's no generics in the Smithy IDL, so everything has to be sort of named. Uh, it it's, feels a little bit constraining when you write a Smithy specification for a service or something, but actually for somebody who maintains tooling on top of Smithy, it's really nice because I don't have to sort of worry about what I'm going to do for languages that may not have uh, support for generics. Um, then we have sort of the, the bread and butter of uh, any programming language. We have the product types, so they're called structures in Smithy. They're basically your case classes. Um, product type is basically a set of fields that are going to be grouped together in the data. So if you have a point that is a, X is that sort of contains X and Y coordinates, the expectation will be that you'll have X and Y at the same time. So it's sort of an algebraic end um, in the sort of data um, algebraic definition. So it can have a zero more fields. Uh, don't worry about the annotations on top of the fields. I'm going to talk about them in a minute. You have unions. Unions, um, they're your sum types. They're the sort of dual of um, structures. So union is basically one or more alternative. Each alternative has a name and refers to a, a type. And yeah, it's it's uh, it's very sort of. Um, symmetric to how structures are defined. You have a very much like a name and a type for each of the alternatives. You have enums, as in like uh, good old enumerations like you'd have in most programming languages. Um, you have two, two flavors of enums. You have the, the string enums and the, the integer enums. Uh, it's a bit annoying because like it does, does um, those two flavors break the sort of protocol agnostic nature of Smithy, but turns out that most people can build a, a pretty good intuition around those things, so I'm not too bothered. Um, and then leaving the sort of space of data definition, we enter in like uh, the interaction space, and we have this concept of operation, which is basically just an input, an output, and potentially a, a bunch of errors. Um, so all of the component of the operation is optional. You can have operations that do not have an input that just returns some data. You can have um, some operations that take an input and return you with nothing or unit. And then you can have a list of errors associated to an operation. And you have services. And services are basically just a collection of operations in a sort of arbitrary kind of way. So. Um, so it's bare, like it's a it's a very bare language. It's very simple in terms of the amount of uh, semantics that it contains. It's a very small set of constructs. Um, you have algebraic ends and algebraic ors in the form of structures and unions. So you can basically model most of data structures, like we do in Scala with our case classes and sealed traits or Scala free enums. It's a clean syntax. It's very reminiscent of uh, like any object or antique language, I suppose, like Scala or Java or whatever. And yeah, that's about it. Um, so what, what do you do when it comes down to sort of pro protocol level semantics? And that's, uh, that's how I'm gonna segue into the concept of trait. Um, so trait is really like the thing in Smithy that distinguishes from the rest of the ideals in the, in the industry. Um, traits are basically annotations that you can use to capture 
additional information that is not um, that is not like the fundamental data definition. It, it's going to be protocol level semantics. It's going to be things that have to do with serialization or maybe some pieces of information that will help the code generators render things in a certain way. Um, so yeah, you have this sort of clear separation of like what is the data definition and what is the protocol, like how, what is the the business concept and how do we sort of take data and put it on the wire and sort of send it to wherever it needs to go. Um, and and the, the very nice thing about Smithy is that the traits come with a, a pretty extensive uh, validation mechanism. So, um, like each trait can be associated with some validation logic, and you can define your own validators if you want. There, I'm, I'm going to talk about um, how it works in the sort of compiler section. But essentially, you can define your validators in Java or Scala, and you can sort of load them or package them alongside your Smithy models. And the validators can be used in the in the compiler, or it can be they they can be used in the editor as well. Um, and what they do is sort of verify that your usage of the annotations complies to the expectations related to, to those. So here what's happening is basically that uh, in the HTTP uh, trait that I have on my grid operation here, I've got a, a URI with a interpolated name parameter. And in the person structure, I've got a name field. So quite naturally, you're expecting that this piece of information would be tied to this particular field here. And the this, this sort of tie is made explicit by this HTTP label trait that I have on, over my name field. And if I remove it, the validation logic of Smithy basically shouts at me because it's not able to reconcile those things like I have to make it explicit. So it's really nice because when you sort of edit a Smithy file, you're guided through good design. You can benefit from validators that are part of the standard library, or you can define your own to capture sort of business specific terminology or validation or rules. And that that sort of reflects in the in the VS Code. Like it's it's implemented in a, using the language server. Uh, I'm talking about the editor support here. But um, there's a VS Code um, plugin that sort of talks to the LSP, and you get the you get the validation as uh, squiggly red lines, etc., and you get those helpful error message messages that really uh, tell you what you've done wrong. So traits are um, actually defined in Smithy itself. Like you can define your own. There there are some that are packaged um, directly within the standard library, but here, for instance, I'm, I'm defining a table a string shape, and I'm in a, annotating it with a trait trait to say uh, this is a trait that can annotate structures, giving in a, giving it a sort of a constraint of being of size one at the very least. And once I've done that, I can use it elsewhere um, by importing it using this use statement here. So you can define your own things your own rules and your own pieces of semantics. And one thing that's very unique to Smithy is the fact that you can sort of apply traits a posteriori. So you can sort of use this apply keyword elsewhere from the data definition or the, the operation definition to say, well, I know a little bit more about this particular thing in the context of my application. So you can, you can sort of extend the meaning of something that you may have loaded from a jar somewhere to say, well, I'm, I'm going to sort of give it a little bit more information because that's relevant to my use case. Maybe not relevant to the absolute entirety of use cases, but for my specific thing, I know a little bit more about stuff. And that's really nice because, sorry, because it sort of lets you um, gain control over how things work in your application. You have control over maybe some annotations that will control how things are rendered in some generated code, for instance. Um, maybe you want to sort of 
add extra, like extra validation for some things. So it's uh, it's really extendable and really uh, really neat. And um, yeah, so I, I said that Smithy is sort of protocol agnostic, and uh, you can sort of define your own protocols. Protocols are basically as the rest in Smithy, they're an annotation or trade that sort of signals how a, a service or how a piece of data should be used or communicate communicated with. Um, so AWS has their own protocols that they package alongside the, the standard library of Smithy. Um, but you can define your own and basically to define a protocol, you just list the traits that you need to worry about when you implement that protocol. So that's actually really nice because um, contrary to sort of something like open API, you can give an exhaustive list of things that tooling must be aware of in order to be compatible with the semantics of the interaction that you're trying to describe in Smithy. And um, so the, the protocol definition is basically this, this annotation with this list of traits and some formal document that specifies the B that sort of specifies or document the behavior of those traits in the context of the protocol. So for instance here, um, I've got a piece of documentation that says, well, uh, this JSON name annotation means that the JSON representation or the JSON field, when I package that or when I serialize the data as JSON, will take this particular value instead of the, the name of the field here. Right. So that's for the part one, uh, Smithy as a language. So a small set of composi compositional constructs. It's uh, extensible. Uh, traits can be grouped in protocols. And you can define your own traits, your own protocols. And because of this sort of flexibility, you can virtually use it in any context, uh, whether it's like a sort of good old REST JSON interaction or whether it's like asynchronous data pipelines. Or maybe data tables for a database somewhere or whatever. Okay, I'm going to talk about uh, how you can sort of use the Smithy compiler in order to get the information that's uh, that's in those Smithy definitions. So uh, the Smithy compiler is written in Java. It's uh, it's a very very well documented library. It's actually very good Java code. They abide by like immutability and. Uh, and uh, like smart builders, and it's uh, they, they're really taking they're, they're taking like binary compatibility very seriously. Um, it's very intuitive to use. It's very Scala friendly, so it's actually really really nice to work with in order to build tooling on top of Smithy. So uh, as a quick start, we have a snippet here that loads the uh, so it's a Scala CLI. Snippet. If you don't know what Scala CLI is, well, shame on you because it's one of the best tools that's been released in the last ten years. Um, <laughs> but it, it lets you sort of do like um, single files, Scala programs with like depend, like ex explaining or expressing your dependencies within the file itself, and it's got very very good editor support in VS Code in particular. I don't know about IntelliJ, but whatever. Um, but what we're doing here is basically like uh, creating a, a model assembler. So the assembler is basically your your compiler, and you can um, define like the the compiler options and the compiler output. So here I'm sort of adding an import to a, a Smithy file, and I'm calling assemble. And what's going to happen when I call assemble is basically that the the compiler will group all the Smithy definitions and verify that all the references. Um, are actually valid. Like if you have a structure that reference another shape, the shape must be there. It's going to verify that the traits are used properly, loading the validation from your um, from the standard library, but also from whatever validation rules you may have potentially on the class path. Um, and once you have the model, what's it? it's pass validation. It's really easy to manipulate. So it's a it's a sort of collection of shapes. It's flattened, like there's no nesting, there's no tree-like structure like you'd have in OpenAPI. 
it's a flattened collection of shapes. Each shape is uh, identified by a unique shape ID, which is the combination of a namespace and a name. Um, so it's really, really easy to manipulate in Scala. You can load a model from various sources. So it makes it really easy to sort of load, um, to sort of share specifications. If you have a specification for an API living somewhere in an artifact repository like Maven or Artifactory, um, the compiler makes it really easy to load this stuff, which is really nice when you, you want to build uh, build plugins or whatever. And um, you can sort of have several Smithy files and load them into a single model. And every time it's gonna make sure that everything is um, referenced properly and uh, the, the sort of where the Smithy file came from is irrelevant. It, it's, it doesn't have to sort of uh, be found at a specific location in your file system. You can also load Smithy definitions directly from a raw string uh, or discover things from the class path. And all of those data definition sources will be reconciled into a, a single model. And the model lets you like look up things by shape IDs. Um, it's, it's really like, I <laughs> can't emphasize how simple uh, it is. It's, it's really nice to build tooling on top of it. Um, now for traits, like the, the essentially there's utilities to map the traits that you've defined in Smithy to uh, Java POJOs or Scala case classes. And you can um, sort of look up things by traits, like give me all the shapes that have this particular thing annotated, for instance. And uh, the trait value that is written as an annotation in the Smithy file will be deserialized into those POJOs and stuff, and you'll be able to sort of get the um, data by calling the accessors on the POJOs. And uh, like you don't have necessarily to write a case class or a POJO for each of the, the trade definition. You can manipulate the trade values using a sort of JSON-like data type called node and basically still process um, all the traits that come from a, a Smithy model like that. So once again, it's, it's super, super easy to build tooling on top of Smithy. So um, yeah, that's, uh, that's basically it uh, for like the, the Smithy as a compiler. I, I should have added a slide for the validation thing, but basically when you add a validator, um, it's basically just an interface that you need to implement that receives the model and basically outputs a list of validation errors. Um, and each validation error will contain like the reference to the, to the shape by the shape ID. It will contain a, a position so that you can have the, the nice squiggly lines in your editor, an error message, this kind of stuff. Um, the Smithy standard library, or the Smithy compiler, I should say, comes with a lot of, like a lot, can't emphasize <laughs> um, enough. It comes with a lot of good things, um, like there's a Smithy diff construct, which lets you like take two models and get the, the diff between those two models to see like whether fields were added, fields were removed from data types, like whether traits were added, traits were removed, and because you have this very simple uh, thing that you can easily manipulate and call on. You can enforce um, API evolution rules within your organization to say, well, I will not let my engineers add required fields on an input parameter in some operation, for instance, because it would break the, the client of, uh, of the API. Um, yeah, you've got a lot of utilities, utilities to transform models as well. Like you can, um, one of the use cases is like if you have an API that has like private endpoints or something like that, you can easily uh, project a Smithy specification so that it outputs a, a, um, a view that you can give to third parties, for instance, that will not contain the private endpoints. 
and they can use it in their own tooling or stuff like that. They can also, uh, like you can also easily transform Smithy to JSON schemas or open API specifications in some ways. Uh, so then again, it sort of maximizes the usability of those uh, those specifications. So yeah, the sort of the TLDR is that uh, it's really, really good to build all sorts of tooling on top of. Now it takes us to the to the Smith for us part. Um, so my team, well, obviously we, we work for Disney, we don't work for AWS, so we, we're not privy to sort of what kind of tooling AWS builds, but overall they seem to be putting out some tooling for um, TypeScript code generators, Kotlin code generators, Rust, some other languages, but it's slowly like um, slowly increasing in size, like the the ecosystem, and um, and yeah, like <laughs> AWS is definitely not a Scala shop, so we we took it upon ourselves to to define some Scala tooling Scala tooling for Smithy. Um, so we have a this library called Smithy for us. It's um, very well documented, or we try to put a lot of effort into our documentation. You can find it in in GitHub under the Disney Streaming Organization. Um, well, usually I would do a live demo, but I forgot to bring my third arm, <laughs> and uh, not really not really fancy uh, putting the mic down to uh, to type some code. Um, but I, I prepped some slides in case. Uh, you know, I couldn't really run the demo for whatever reason. So um, Smithy for us comes in the form of a, a build plugin and a set of runtime li libraries. There's an SBT plugin and a mail plugin. So the the usage, or we try to make the usage as simple as possible. Um, so basically for SBT, you just like enable Smithy for us code gen plugin, then you pull some runtime dependencies because the generated code will contain some uh, things that are defined in our Smithy for us core um, library. In Mill, it's it's quite similar. Not gonna sort of linger too much there. Um, but in a nutshell, what we're trying to do with Smithy for us is basically to convert those uh, Smithy constructs to code that looks sort of like this. So it's it's. We're trying to make the usage of the generated code that we produce from Smithy specification as, as simple as possible. So services are generated as, as sort of traits um, using polymorphic return types. Structures are generated as, as case classes. When you have the required trait, we, uh, or when you don't have the required trait, rather, we render the fields as optional. Um, simple shapes are rendered as opaque types in Scala free, um, so that you have the sort of strong guarantee. Uh, like people from the Iron talk earlier, are you guys? Yeah, yeah. Very good library. Thanks a lot for your work. Um, so um, yeah, we, like we we try to sort of make it as type safe as possible and as uh, idiomatic scale as possible. So that's for the sort of fundamental shapes. But what happens when you add traits? So in reality, the the generated code looks like this. So for a structure that has a name and a and a resonance field, for instance, you'll get a case class that that takes the the same fields. Um, and then a companion object of this data type will have a schema value. And the schema is basically a construct that captures all the information from the Smithy specification that lets us deconstruct and reconstruct the data. So we have sort of abstraction that lets us generally, generically process the data to provide uh, encoders and decoders in various um, serialization formats. And so every time you add a trait, the trait is going to be captured within the schema. Because traits are defined in Smithy, it means that we can generate case classes for them or data types for them. And when they are applied, like here, using the HTTP query trait on a Smithy field, we can generate a corresponding case class instance in the Scala code. So we try to exhaustively capture the information that lives in the Smithy 
specification. For operations, um, it's the same thing, like we're trying to really capture all the information, including the input, the output, the errors. There's a couple more type parameters here. It's quite scary, but really the, the end users, yourselves or um, the developers in my company are not supposed to sort of really worry about those things. Those are, those are just here for the tooling builders to use in order to provide an interop libraries that will sort of interpret the Smithy for us code into JSON or XML or whatever over serialization mechanism. And uh, yeah, so in, in the sort of companion object of a reified operation, so yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna use the term JDT. Uh, obviously, uh, those are not real JDTs as the talk from this morning or the keynote from this morning explained, but we reify each operation as a case class that sort of tracks the, the corresponding um, relevant types in the, in the companion object of the operation. We reference the schemas of the inputs, of the outputs, of the errors, etc. cetera. Um, and we capture the hints, obviously, or the traits. As we call them hints because trait is a keyword in Scala, obviously. And um, yeah, so services are, <laughs> as they are generated are, are quite scary um, because we're trying to sort of make the generated code as, as flexible as possible so that if you want to sort of use it in a in Zio or whatever, you, you still have the reference to the types in the return type here, but the end user is not really interacting with this complexity at all. But the, the, the interesting point here is that the component of the generated services capture, captures the list of endpoints and each endpoint will have an input schema, an output schema, error schemas, etc. And then additionally, the service contains methods. It's very scary, so I sort of eluded the <laughs> definition, but those uh, methods are allowing to turn this object oriented trait into a generic function that we can pass to interpreters in order to produce HTTP services or HTTP clients and and um, this kind of stuff. Okay. Um, so the service abstraction here that uh, component object of the generated trait or interface um, extends. This is the main entry point for interpreters in Smithy for us. Um, so basically the, the sort of, the way that Smithy for us works is like it, it uses the abstractions that are the schemas, the endpoints, and the services in order to turn the generated data into things that are going to be deserialized, serialized, routed, reverse routed in given protocols. So the, the, the generated code actually doesn't contain any reference to third party libraries. It only needs us, maybe for a score, to compile. So it's entirely protocol agnostic and it can be used in many, many protocols. Um, and yeah, we don't bias. We don't bias towards uh, JSON. We don't bias towards XML. We don't bias towards any particular technology. So we're really trying to maximize the amount of use cases in which this generated code can be used. It's just a big web of yeah inter interconnected um, abstractions. And <laughs> well, I'm going to sort of jump a little bit far, but that's those abstractions let us use this stuff in very, very different bits of context. Um, so I'm not gonna show any code to look what, to sort of show you like what the interpreters look like because it's a, it's, a, it's a somewhat complex, but the usage from the user's perspective is actually really simple. So I'm gonna give the example of uh, our integration with uh, HTTP for us, which is provided out of the box with Smithy for us. So there's a opt-in module that you can pull like this in your SBT build. And once you've sort of it compile um, in your project, the generated code will, will be created and you'll be able to sort of use the generated service like this, like you're implementing what it says. Like if you have a hello operation in the Smithy specification, you have a hello method in a greeting service, for instance. And so you really easily like implement this method as you would any other interface. And um, 
once you've done that, you can call this one liner here to say, well, I'm going to interpret my implementation here in the context of a uh, the specific like simple REST JSON protocol that we provide out of the box. And that's going to give me HTTP roots. Um, that's an HTTP for S construct. And once I've got the roots, I can sort of mount them into a server to get a working thing. And everything that's sort of defined in my MIFI specification will be taken care of by the tooling. You don't have to worry about serialization. You don't have to worry about routing just have to worry about business specific concepts. So it's really about speeding up the implementation of services once you have a specification um, made available. And because the language for specifying those services is easy to understand from um, a, a developer's point of view, no matter the language that you use on a day-to-day -day basis, it means that the sort of contract for your APIs can be achieved really, really fast much faster than open API for for example so once you've run the server that's it basically like you can curl it you you can uh, call it from other applications and and that's it um, so yeah Smith for us uh, right now we have reached version 0 that 18 so I'm not gonna say it's fully stable but we are slowly but truly stabilizing the API and trying to make it more and more uh, binary compatible every time we we sort of increase the minor number. Uh, it's protocol agnostic cogeneration. It works against every platform that Scala compiles against, JVM.js native. It works for Scala 3, uh, Scala 2.13, Scala 12. Um, so as, as far as features goes, there's lots of features. Too many to sort of describe in a a slide, but with SBTN mill integration, we have a out of the box implementation for a simple REST JSON protocol that uh, is implemented on top of HTTP for us. But internally at Disney, we have like m probably integration with like six or seven different backends, including like uh, Spring Boot, Vertex, like HTTP, Play, uh, this kind of stuff. We're not going to open source everything, but you know, uh, you get Open API for free, so the Smithy for us plugin will automatically convert your Smithy specification into Open API when they're abiding by the simple REST JSON protocol, and you can uh, have a one-liner to sort of serve Swagger UI for those specifications. Uh, we've got out of the box serialization for XML, JSON, um, some URL from data format. We have AWS SDKs, pure scale AWS SDKs covering most operations. That's just something we've done for fun because AWS actually um, provides the Smithy specifications to their services if you know where to look. And yeah, uh, lots and lots of things. So conclusion. Uh, Smithy is a very neat interface definition language. It's really sh it really shines in like retrofitting protocol, uh, your like organization specific protocols into an IDL. So if you if you have a messy use case in your organization and you want to make into do something tidy, uh, chances are Smithy is is a good solution to try. Um, it's a very solid foundation for tooling. It's much easier to build tooling on top of Smithy than it is to build on top of OpenAPI, for instance. And uh, <laughs> yeah, Smithy for us is great, uh, probably. Well, yeah, I, I use it. Um, a lot of people use it at Disney. A lot of people use it at SiriusXM. A lot of companies use it um, in the industry. Not that many, obviously, Scala is still a niche language, but there you go. Uh, that's it for me. Any questions? I um, mean, Disney is a big company. <laughs> Car providers? No, not yet. It, it, 
So Smithy has been in the build at Amazon for about 12 years, but they've only open sourced it in 2018. So the open source ecosystem and the users are not that numerous or big. Um, but they've done a really, really good job. It's really well designed. And I do think that given the weight of AWS, it could become an industry standard at some point. So that's partly why we're interested in open sourcing our tooling, because we we think that it benefits the industry from, or for, you know, a lot of things. Yeah, um, I, I haven't seen uh, versioning uh, in, in Smithy. And so I'm, I'm wondering how, well, specifically at Disney, how you handle sharing those with different teams uh, and, and changing the schemas. Uh, yeah. Do you use a monorepo? Yes. Uh, so at Disney, so there's like different strategies. Obviously, Smith is not prescriptive in how you should do versioning. They they have some like IDs and what's breaking, what's not breaking. But because they sort of provide you with the tools to do diff between two different models, you can take the current version, the previous version, get the the set of changes and basically say, this is breaking, this is not breaking, and build your versioning strategy based on that. So at, at Disney, without getting too much into details, like we have this sort of mono repo where we were run um, compatibility like rules every change, and the, version, the versioning number really doesn't matter because we sort of guarantee that every change is gonna be either backward or forward compatible depending on the, yeah. Okay, so you, you've get, you take care of Backward, forward compatibility, so that deployment can be. Not yeah, we 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 help the. Yeah, we're not like fully deployed at Disney. Let's say like it's a it's a growing effort uh, that my team is is um, associated with. But yeah, overall, like we're reducing the the number of bugs related to deploying incompatible versions by virtue of uh, having those checks. I have a quick question about uh, protocols uh, supported by Smithy. Uh, you talk a lot about HTTP and Co. Does uh, Smithy su support uh, gRPC? I'm working on that. You are working on that? Yes. And uh, how is it possible to mix uh, for the same operations the, yeah, like yeah, a yeah, couple sure. of protocols? Well, yeah, you, you're not really, like the only limitation is that you can only have one instance of a trait on top of a shape. So you can have like a JSON name for a shape and also a proto field number, for instance, if you create a proto field number like trait. And um, basically, like if I go back, not sure how much time I've got, but uh, when I was talking about the protocol definition, so each protocol specifies the set of traits in it's interested in. So you could have a service that is annotated with like simple REST JSON and gRPC. And then when you call the simple REST JSON builder, that will just take care of the simple REST JSON aspect when you call when you call later the gRPC builder that will take care of the gRPC aspect. All right, I think that's it. Well, thank you very much.